Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 14 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have Bernard Golden as our special guest. Bernard is the vice president of cloud strategy at Capital One. Bernard is a long time tech innovator and visionary. Wired named him as one of the top 10 most influential people in cloud computing. He is the author and co-author of five books, including the best-selling cloud computing book ever, Amazon Web Services for Dummies. Hi Dave and Bernard, a warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have two cloud innovators and tech visionaries on the Australia show this week. Great to have you here. Yeah, it's great to have Bernard here, man. He's, a, he's been a fixture in the cloud computing industry since it first started. Uh, and also, just kind of uh, kudos to him. I mean, he's got a column, and he had a column in CIO magazine. I think you saw as it going on. Uh, it's always quoted in the uh, in the press. And uh, congratulations on your new position at Capital One, Bernard. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me to participate in your program. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. And yeah, congratulations on your new role at Capital One, Bernard. That's fantastic. Well, thanks. Thank you so much. In this week's show, we'll be talking about cloud adoption around the world. Is cloud adoption common from country to country? If so, where does Australia fit into these patterns, guys? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that first. And I, I, I clipped a, an article. This guy traveled all over the world and came up with some pretty generic observations, including the fact that small companies are quicker to adopt cloud computing than large companies. Um, well, I mean, I, we get that. Obviously, that's <laughs> that's a common thing. But I think the, the reason I look, use this article is that I find that Australia is probably a little counter to that. So the global, you know, the multinational companies that are based in Australia and uh, just beyond the startups, the larger companies as well, are adopting cloud computing pretty fast, and, you know, at a, at a rate that's higher than I think uh, the rest of the world, including the United States and Europe. And I think that's really kind of a bear to the fact that they need to become a little bit more innovative in the space or a bit more hungry. And they're looking to bring agility and the ability to move into markets quicker, you know, really kind of get the most bang for the buck. And so it's a it's it's kind of a common thing that we're seeing this kind of pattern and we're seeing adoption that's occurring probably a little slower than we thought it was. But that doesn't seem to be the case in Australia, at least for the statistics that I'm seeing. What do you think, Bernard? Yeah, well, um, I, I think in part there's a hunger for this in within Australia and also I would say New Zealand. I had the opportunity while I was working at Dell to work pretty extensively with a with a telecom in New Zealand. And, and one of the challenges for those kinds of companies is they're they're so remote from the head typically remote from the headquarters of the US based companies. And so they don't have there's not as much presence there. Stuff doesn't come out quite as fast and the cloud providers have gone in there you know they have much less lag between some between something being done you know in the states or even in Europe and Australia and New Zealand so it sort of makes sense that they're getting quicker access to innovation they're going to move toward that I, I think that I think that is uh, makes makes quite a bit of sense that that with cloud they'd be moving toward it more quickly than maybe other places because they've always been sort of behind the curve based on what the technology companies, their presence were in those markets. So, I mean, going forward, um, do you see this kind of a, a, a dot? And, then, and this is probably a question for Brad you know, as well. You know, the business climate in Australia, um, do we see this continuing? Do you see the momentum going on for you know, the next couple of years? Or is this going to be uh, you know, something that's going to be just a 2018, 2019 phenomenon? Well, it's a great question. I think that this has been going on before, you know, to th looking towards 2018, 2019. Investment has been there for startups in the tech, tech market quite heavily. Uh, we spoke uh, um, in one of the previous shows about how much money and the, the level of the, the tech startups that are actually out there in Australia. Um, they're, 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 like you say, they aren't the early adopters. They're the, the ones that really want to get it. They're the eager ones, the ones that really want to move with things and take action. And I think that's important. Uh, and I think they embrace it and, and want to enhance the business. Uh, and I think that's important as well going forward. It's not a case of a reluctance of, 
um, oh, we've got to do, uh, you know, oh, when do we get the time to get around to doing this? So we've got to get around to doing this and we need to do it as soon as possible. So I think it's the, the real positivity and the mindset is there um, for, for the long term. And I think it is a long term mindset when it comes to embracing technology anyway. So in, inherently there, there seems to be that the, the legacy period of catching up um, and, and now the, the the the, uh, the the market has been caught up with um, it's now you know really running with that baton uh, and and really you know setting the world alight with some of the companies that are coming out of Australia with regards to tech innovation uh, a lot of the the SaaS platforms are actually being rolled out across the world uh, and and are, you know facing up and and having great sort of head to head with companies such as Microsoft Azure um, you know in in that marketplace so I think it's it's been phenomenal for Australia and I think it will grow uh, there are some older companies that aren't moving so quick to cloud and uh, you know they're going to feel the pain because the smaller companies that were around their ankles will be before long above their shoulders so I think it's uh, it's a mindset which has got the long-term value there. So, so Bernard I'm going to go ahead and um, ask a question um, probably no easy answer to but I interested in your response on this. Do you think that the uh, economic um, growth uh, within the international community, in other words, all the countries out there inside the United States, the United States itself, and also outside the United States itself, will have a direct correlation with the use of cloud. Because what I'm seeing now is that the high growth of the gross national products in the various countries out there really seem to be aligned with the consumption of public cloud technology. Is that something that will continue, or is that a anomaly flash in the pan? Well, let me address that in two different ways. So first. I think you're probably right because given that we're in pretty attractive or at least benign economic circumstances, there's growth pretty much around the world, maybe not as high as everyone would like, but there's growth as compared to, you know, it took companies and economies a long time to climb out of the financial crisis. And during those times, hard times, IT wasn't getting a lot of investment. Well, now that times are somewhat better, companies are now going back and I think sort of really investing in IT, but also bumping it up. And so then they look at it and they go, well, we've got some more money. What are we going to invest it in? Well, let's, we're not going to be just stuck, just maintaining the old stuff the way they were when times were tough. It's like, let's go do new things. Where are you going to put the new things? You're going to put them in cloud. So I think that's, that's one element of it. Um, but let me drill down a little bit further. Every quarter, I look at the quarterly results of what I call the big three cloud providers, AMG, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. That's how I refer to them. And I sort of look at their overall results, see the, the, you know, how much money they made in the cloud, how much revenue. And then I look at the growth rates. And I consider the single most important number in all of cloud computing is AWS's growth rate, because that's a sort of a proxy for what's going on in the cloud computing adoption industry. And this past quarter, which ended in, at the end of December, that number actually grew for the first time in several years. It's been sitting at about 40, 42 percent, and went up to 44 percent. Sorry, 44 percent, almost 45, I think. That tells me that the adoption of cloud computing is actually increasing. And so that sort of answers an er earlier question you posed, which is, is this a flash in the pan? Is this 2018, 2019? I don't think so. I think we're really at the um, at an inflection point, and the growth is actually going to really accelerate. So the economic circumstances make it possible to invest. Companies are starting to look at investing, and they're going to put that toward the cloud. And we can see evidence of that in the numbers are growing in terms of the growth rates for the cloud providers. So in other words, people who are taking the risk are going to see the return on the risk. And so it doesn't matter what country they're in. Cloud's kind of an international ubiquitous thing now, other than you know issues with China. But anytime they're investing in the cloud, they're typically going to get uh, economic growth directly from that. And so you know, maybe it is an indicator. It's probably not a great indicator because I don't think there's a one-to-one -one correlation with success in the gross national product in various countries out there with consumption of cloud-based resources. But it's a metric that I would look at. Yeah, I think that's I think that I think that's a good way to think about it. I mean, it's not going to be oh, we went to two point four percent GDP growth. You know, that means something particular, but it's a benign environment that's more in, in investments going into IT. And if IT is going to increase their investment, they're going to look toward investing in new stuff that's associated with innovation. 
particularly given that IT is now being looked at as kind of the driver for a lot of innovation within companies. So they're going to put money in, and it's naturally going to flow toward um, cloud computing. It's it's certainly not going to flow toward, let's go back to all the legacy players that we've been with for 20 years and give them more money because they feel like I haven't, you know, they're not able to get as much innovation out of that. Yeah, so the legacy companies are ultimately going to suffer from this as people kind of shift into more modern, innovative, disruptive technology. So what is the appetite for, Brad, this is the question for you. What's the appetite for disruption in Australia right now? Is it something that they're hungering for? Is it something that's just kind of a, uh, um, you know, not good to say? Is it something that's actually happening? Disruption is my favorite word, if I'm honest. Um, I think it's, uh, it's an exciting place to be because of the disruption. Uh, because there is so much innovation going on down here. There are businesses which, you know, that doesn't necessarily tick their boxes, the word disruption, because they're comfortable, they're happy, they've got their hierarchies, they've got their, their protocols, and, uh, you know, everyone knows where they, they sit. So it doesn't sit well within certain sized organizations and, uh, and, and certain mindsets. And I go back to mindset again, because I'm big about, big about mindset. Uh, and I think it's... Um, I think it is down to the mindset of accepting that disruption is there and it's happening. It's happening in Australia uh, and it's also happening from China and, and the rest of APAC where we've got the, the intrusion of Chinese technologies. I say intrusion, it's intrusive in the respect being of people that don't like disruption. Uh, for the people that, that like the disruption and, and appreciate that, then you know it's embraced because what Ali Cloud can bring to Australia comparatively to, to AWS, etc., it, it really brings another ball, ball player to the field. So as you and I have spoken about a couple of times in different shows, uh, the speed at which Ali Cloud is growing, especially in Australia and, and the US. But yes, disruption, I think it goes two ways. Some people love it, some people hate it. The people that are embracing it, they're going places, they're getting the investment that they need um, because they're akin to the market. They know what they need to do and they know that they've got to do it quickly. So uh, a disruptive mindset, I think, albeit <laughs> you know, uh, it seems counterintuitive to say a disruptive mindset, but it, it really means something uh, of empowerment, especially uh, in Australia and probably the rest of the world. Wouldn't you both uh, think? Yeah, I think so. And I, I think Bernard would agree unless he disagrees. Um, I, I think that ultimately it's uh, it's going to be a very um, risky thing for lots of companies to accept. And the point that was made in the article, I'll just kind of loop it back there, that if you're a big company and you're growing at, you know, uh, you know, reasonable rate, not necessarily blowing things out, um, it doesn't always make sense for you to kind of put put things at risk. Do you agree, Bernard? Well, um, I'll, I'll make a, an observation, which is that um, everyone loves disruption in somebody else's business. And, you know, it's, it's sort of – but the fact is disruption is coming to every industry and every business in every industry. You know, there's no safe harbor from disruption. And I, and I personally tie it – enormously to cloud computing because it, this is like a step change in what you can do with digital technologies. Digital technologies are starting to impact every industry. You know, the expectations in transportation or healthcare or finance or education are all being powered by what can I do digitally and cloud computing is the way that innovation is going to get done. And just the fact that we were talking about cloud computing versus traditional computing, the fact that you can spin up and start experimenting with a particular business initiative in a matter of hours or days as opposed to weeks or months changes the way that you look at how you can uh, experiment and adopt innovation and bring it to market. And so I don't think there's any safe harbor. I mean, I understand a lot of companies go, hey, we've been you know, super successful, fat, dumb, and happy the way things were. We'd like it to stay that way. But every industry has somebody who's going to figure out how do I change the dynamics here. And that'll either be some new entrant or it'll be some current entrant that says, you know, I'm not happy being number four. I want to be number two. What can I do to bring to the market? And they're going to use cloud computing for that. And so I, I you know, I, I sort of agree that I think we're going to see this in every geography. You know, there may be differences in sort of how rapid it is or or what particular industries industries that it comes out of, 
But I don't, I don't think there's any safe harbor from this. Uh, you know, disruption is going to come to every geography, every industry, and really is going to be, I believe, a really critical question for every company. Yeah, I couldn't say it better myself. Well, let's get back, back to the guy who's sitting in Australia to close out the Australian show. Well, thank you, guys. It's been a wonderful show, and it's great to talk about disruptive technologies with you guys because it, your, your input is so valuable and, uh, and you know, looked upon by so many as well and, and appreciated. So, yeah, it's been awesome. It's, uh, it's a great topic, David. Thanks for, for bringing that topic to the table for this week's Australia show. That's, uh, that's great. So thanks, Bernard. I really appreciate you being a part of the show this week. Thank you so much for inviting me to come and uh, talk with you. That's an absolute pleasure. And David, all, as always, uh, thank you so much for being part of the show. Peace out. <laughs> well, thanks for, for joining us. And thanks for watching us, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Uh, please stay tuned for more shows uh, we've got coming up. And please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on future shows. Um, you can catch Bernard on Twitter, which is at Bernard Golden. David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. And myself on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>